Hi, in this video we are going to talk about the so-called road cutting problem, so let's get started. What is the problem itself? Given a road with certain lengths L, and given the prices of different lengths in a one-dimensional array, and how to cut the rod in order to maximize the profit? This is the so-called rod cutting problem. So for example, we have a road length 5 meter, and we have prices for different lengths. If the pieces are 1 meter long, it reverses $2. If they are 2 meter long, then $5. 3 meter long, $7. And 4 meter long, $3. There may be several solutions to the same problem. So, for example, solutions to the rod cutting problem can be 2 and 3, which means that cut the rod to get a 2 meter piece and a 3 meter piece, or Cut the rod to get two 2 meter pieces and a single 1 meter piece. It is going to be the same profit as we have seen before. So the total value for both solutions are $12. And this is how we are going to solve the, the problem itself. So we can solve it two ways. Recursion, this is the naive approach. We just have to write a simple recursive method or function n minus 1 cuts can be made in the rod of length n. So there are 2 to the power of n minus 1 ways to cut the rod. And there are two main problems again. First of all, the overlapping subproblems. And as we have talked earlier, if they are overlapping subproblems, it is a good uh, hint that we should use dynamic programming. And the time complexity, it is exponential time complexity, although 2 to the power of n minus 1, 1, where n is the length of the rod in units. For every length, we have two options, whether to cut or not, so that's why it is 2 to the power of n minus 1. It's very important that this kind of dynamic programming prog problems are usually integer problems, which means that we can have integer values, for example, the length of the rod, uh, can be 1 meters, 2, 3, 4, 5. We are going to see the knapsack problem, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are integer problems. We cannot have, for example, 1.5, 2.25, and so on. So we should use dynamic programming instead. We have to create a solution matrix. The TDP table, we will have rows and, of course, the columns. We have to define the base cases. If original length is uh, zero, then the profit will be zero and so on. The complexity uh, will not be exponential with the help of dynamic programming. So this is the base case. We have a DP table. It is a two-dimensional array or a matrix with the row index i and column index j. And if the j is equal to zero, uh, or the i is equal to 0, we are going to fill the table with zeros. It means simply that the first row and the first column of the DP table is contain zeros. Then if the i is less than or equal to j, so the row index is less than or equal to the column index, then we have to use this formula, maximum DP table i minus 1j, and the price is i plus DP table ij minus i, we have to take the maximum. And if the i is greater than j, we just have to copy the value from the cell above. dp table i minus 1 j, it is the equivalent. So let's see. We have, for example, the length equal to 5, and we have the 5 meter $2, 2 meter $5, 3 meter $7, 4 meter $3 values. So the prices are 2, 5, 7, and 3. And the number of columns is equal to the L plus 1, the number of rows equal to the price is that length plus 1, because we have an extra 0 column and 0 length. So the column header will consist of the L length, and the, the rows are the length pa price pairs. And this is why this is a dynamic programming problem, because we try to find subproblems. And that's why we consider the L length to be 0, then to be 1, then to be 2, then 3, 4, and 5. Even when we know that in the exact problem, we know that the L length is equal to 5. And so we have to consider the length 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on a step-by-step -step basis, where we can have 1, 2, 3, 4 unit lengths, 
at the same time. So we solve the subproblems and combine them for the final solution. This is the typical dynamic programming approach. And on the rows, we have the length pair pairs, and uh, we consider the subproblems too. So we consider when there are no cuts at all, what would be the optimal solution? If we could have just one cut, we can use one meter pieces. What would be the optimal solutions? Then we can use the first two items. So we can have either one meter cut or two meter cut. What would be the optimal solution? Then we can have zero meter, one meter, two meters, three meters. Then we can have all of them. And why is it good? Because we keep constructing subproblems. Why is it good? Because we are not able to uh, recalculate the same problem over and over again as we have seen for recur recursion. We can reuse it with the help of this dynamic table. Okay, so the first, of course, uh, if the L length is zero, no matter how many items we consider, the profit will be zero. And of course, if the um, if you have zero meter pieces, then the profit will be zero. So the first row and the first column will contain zeros. Then what about if we consider the if we have only if we can have only one meter pieces, and we and the length L is one meter, then the profit will be two dollars because we can have one meter. If the L is two meter and we can only have one meter pieces. The two meter consists of two one meter pieces, so two times two is equal to four. Then what about when we have three meters length rod, and we can use only one meter pieces? Then we will have three meter out of this one meters, so three times two dollar is six dollar. What about we have four four times two dollar is eight, and five times two is equal to ten dollar. So what about we have, it is a bit more complex because we can use either the 1 meter or the 2 meter pieces. So we can use this dynamic table where the i, j is equal to, we can use the maximum item. We, we just have to consider whether the i is greater or less than j. In this situation you see that the index, I denoted it with green, it is 2. Of course without the m because that denotes meters. So 2 and the column index is 1. So the row index i is greater than the j, so we just have to copy the value from the above cell. That's what the dp table i minus 1 and j equation suggests. It is the same for the next one. Or sorry, uh, the 2 index is equal to 2, so we have to use the maximum equation. So the dp table index 2, 2 is equal to the max dp table 1, 2. And $5, we have to select the $5 by because the row index is 2. And in, when the row index is 2, the price is equal to $5. We just have to read it from the dynamic programming table. Uh, and of course, we have to consider it that $4 or $5 is the greater. Of course, we want to maximize our profit, so we're going to choose what's better. Here, again, we have to use this maximum equation. We have to consider that whether the value from the cell above, which is $6, is greater, or we have to add the given rod piece price, which is $5, plus the DP table 2-1, which is going to equal $7. So 7 is greater, so we choose 7. Then we again have to calculate it and we have to take the maximum, which is 10, and again, which is going to 12. Now, the row index is 3 and the column index is 1, so we just have to copy the value in the cell above. 3 is the row index, 2 is the column index, so the i is less than j. Sorry, the i is greater than j, so we have to copy the value from the cell above. Now the i is equal to the j, so we have to use this maximum equation, and we come to the conclusion that whether $7 or $7 is the maximum, of course they are equal, so we can choose both of them. Then again, we will use the maximum equation and come to the conclusion whether there is a $10 or a $9. It's very important that now we have to use the prices i, is going to be 0, 2, 5, 7, 3, because that's what we are storing in the prices one-dimensional array. 
so it is not going to change in a in the same in a row but if we go to another row it's going to change okay so it is going to be equal 10 then it's going to be equal 12 we have to decide between 12 and 12 of course they are the same here we just have to copy the values because the 4 is the row index and 1 is the column index and because the row index is greater than the j column index we just have to copy here again we just have to copy here we have to copy and the 4 index in the 3 column we have to copy and in the 4 column uh, we have to calculate because the 4 is equal to 4 so the i is equal to j so we have to use the maximum uh, uh, yeah, we have to use the maximum um, equation. And again, for the 5, when the index, row index is 4, the column index is 5. So we come to the conclusion that we can make a $12 profit, but what are the optimal cuts? So we come to the conclusion that the last item, uh, the rightmost on the bottom, it is coming from the cell above. And if it's coming from the cell above, how do we know it? Because it is equal to the value in the cell above, $12 is, e is equal to $12, it means that there is no 4 meter cut in the solution. So we go above. And we come to the conclusion that it is coming from the cell above again. So it means that there is no 3 meter cut in the solution. What about this? It is not coming from the cell above, which means that there is a 2 meter cut in the solution. So we have to subtract the given price, which corresponding to the length 2 meter, from $12. So go to that position. So $12 minus 5 is $7. So we have to go to the tape, DP table 2, 3, because that's the $7. And we come to the conclusion that there is not coming from the cell above. It means that there is a 2 meter cut again in the solution. So there is again a 2 meter cut. So we have to subtract the given price $5 corresponding to the length 2 meter from $7 and go to that position. $7 minus $5 is $2. So we go to the DP table 2, 1 because there's the $2 we are looking for. And we come to the conclusion that this is coming from the cell above. So there is no more 2 meter cut in the solution. So we go above. And it is not coming from the cell above. It means that there is a 1 meter cut in the solution. So the solution set now is 2 meter, 2 meter, and 1 meter. And if we subtract the given price from the corresponding length, it is going to be equal to 0, which means that if we, uh, it is the first column with zeros in it, so we terminate the algorithm. If we end up with this row or with this column full of zeros, it means that it is the end of our algorithm. So the solution is that 2 meter, 2 meter, 1 meter, so we will have 2, out of the 2 meter length cut and a single 1 meter cut. This is the optimal solution and we can make a profit $12 as we have seen. Okay, so that's about the theory for the road cutting problem. Thanks for watching.